Today, we've got a nice chill video over on Lightroom. I'm gonna be showing you as a photographer how I go from this photo to this one. Now, if you wanna follow along step by step, there's a raw photo below and you can go and download that and follow along with me step by step. Attached to that raw photo as well, you get the screenshots of all the settings just in case you get lost or you want to point out something specific. They're all there for you to go and follow along with. But if you'd like the cheat sheet, then you can just go ahead. You can just go and buy the presets over my website if you'd like to. We're gonna jump into it and see how we go. We're gonna first of all leave the exposure where it is and I'm going to drop the contrast. Now the reason I'm dropping the contrast here is because in the tone curve in a minute, I'll show you, I'm gonna add back in that contrast but in the tone curve and it'll all make sense. I'm gonna increase the highlights slightly, uh, decrease the shadows, leave the whites where they are and I'm gonna bring up the blacks. So it's looking very uh, washed out at the moment but again, we're gonna add everything back in now in the tone curve. I do a lot of my editing in the tone curve and I'm gonna show you how. Bottom left, we have blacks. Top right, we have whites. So we have blacks, shadows are there, mid-tones are there, and the highlights are there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring this one down like so, and we're just gonna create a subtle S curve just like that. I'm actually gonna bring in another one just in between the shadows and the blacks just to give it a little bit more contrasty. So just turning that on and off, you can see we've already brought back that contrast. And the reason I do that is because this gives me more control in my eyes and I prefer editing in the tone curve. We're gonna to go to the reds and the cyan here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring down the cyans like this. I'm gonna bring up towards here. Just, you can follow along and I'm gonna add in one more, just bringing that in. I wanted that kind of a nice arch there going back up to the S like that. We'll turn that on and off. And again, we're just gonna go through this quickly here. And this is gonna be more of a subtle S curve like so. And we're gonna go with the blues and the yellows. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that we've added in that contrast. So we're working towards that final image. I'm gonna just reduce the saturation slightly and I'm going to increase the texture increase the clarity slightly, and then just reduce the dehaze. If you do a little before and after, you can see on the screen. If you just press Y on your keyboard, it'll show you a before and after. Uh, so we're gonna go into the HSL. Now, because we've done most of the color grading in the tone curve, now what we're gonna do here is just make some subtle adjustments to the hues and the saturation. So hues, uh, the greens and the aquas, I'm gonna change to the greens, I'm gonna make a little bit more yellow. Aquas, I'm gonna make a little bit more blue because I don't want it too turquoisey. And then the blue, again, I'm gonna bring it more towards the blues. We're gonna to go to luminance. We're gonna increase the luminance on the aquas, increase the luminance on the blue, and we're gonna reduce the greens and the yellows. We're gonna to go to saturation, and I'm just gonna reduce the yellow saturation and the green, because I don't want too many greens in there. Um, and just back over to the hue slightly, we're gonna make the yellows a little bit more orange and the orange is a little bit more red, as you can see down here, just promoting that reflection in the red. So a little before and after, again, you could just press Y to see the before and after. And we're gonna continue moving down towards the color grading tool. Now, this is where you can do the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights. Obviously, you don't wanna to go too strong with that because if we do the midtones, you can see like it's a bit too much. So I'm gonna take it over towards the blues. I'm going to make the saturation a little bit less and the balance here, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, but not too much. Um, and then again with the shadows, when you're all the way saturated, it just becomes a little bit too heavy. So I'm gonna go towards the kind of turquoise blues and just reduce that a little bit more. If we turn these on and off, you can see that it's just bringing in those specific colors that we want. Um, again, with the highlights, I'm gonna make the highlights now a little bit more red. So we're looking at this area here and the car headlights. We just move that around you can see how that affects the image but i want it to be as natural as possible we're going to go down to the calibration slider uh, so the red primary i'm going to move slightly towards the oranges and then i'm going to increase the saturation and then the green primary i'm going to move slightly towards the green slash aqua um, and increase the saturation again now the blue primary we can either go left or right but as you can see if you go right it kind of mutes those reds. I want to bring out those reds. Now this is where we're going to add some depth into the image with masking. So if you go ahead up to the top here and press on the right hand side, we're going to press subject and it's going to select 
the tram. Now, sometimes it selects the object, but when it is dark, it is obviously going to interpret this as similar to the side here. So that's why we want to create that separation. So if you go to that mask, press plus, go to brush or objects. I typically go brush because I could be more specific. And I'm going to brush around the parts that I want to change. So all I want to do is just do this and make sure the whole front of the tram is nice and highlighted. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate the tram with the background so it sticks out more. So it shows you the tram, the subject that I'm trying to, to show you. Uh, now, if you go over to the thing that you've just done, the mask that you've just done, press right, then you press duplicate and invert mask. Now it's going to take that mask and it's going to do the background. So now that the background is selected, and if you can't see the red, you could just press O to toggle it on and off. So I'm going to toggle that off so I can see the difference in the color grading. I'm going to go down to dehaze and I'm going to decrease the dehaze. Now, I know that looks very washed out, but it'll all make sense in a moment. I'm going to reduce the clarity as well, and I'm going to increase the texture and the sharpness. Not too much though on the sharpness because I don't want it to look too fake. Now I'm going to go up here to the tones. I'm going to increase the highlights and I'm going to reduce the exposures and increase some contrast and drop that shadow like that. And then I'm going to take the temperature and I'm going to make it a little bit more blue like so, and I'm going to increase the tint slightly and just decrease the saturation ever so slightly. Then I'm going to go back to the original mask, which is the tram, and I'm going to make that pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to bring up the exposure and then go down to the clarity, increase the clarity, and then just change the white balance on that. Go back to the previous mask, the, the one in the background, um, I actually think that we can reduce the highlights a bit, reduce the contrast, and then I'm going to add another mask with a linear gradient, and I'm going to come in from the sides here, and I'm going to increase the dehaze on the side. Now, I'm going to create kind of like a, a vignetting, but I'm going to control how that vignette is. Uh, if you go down to the bottom and do a vignette, what you end up doing is you end up having a, a a uniform vignette where everything is the same and I don't want that. I want to be able to control how much the vignette is coming into it. So I've made the initial mask and then I'm just pressing plus to add another linear gradient and I can just go along and do that. Now if you do a little Y you can see the before and after how much is accentuated and brought out the tram. On the left hand side you can see it's a great photo but it's kind of lost whereas on the right hand side it just accentuates that tram and makes it pop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove some distractions that I don't want in the frame, but I think that's worked out pretty good. So we'll do a little why you can see a before and after, and I think you'll agree. It turned out really, really good. If you'd like to get involved, then down in the description there is a link. You can go and download the raw file and you can have a go. If you're going to upload it to Instagram, make sure you tag me and use the hashtag Optical Wonder and I look forward to seeing what you create. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload videos like this. With all that being said, create more, stress less, and I'll see you in the next one.